Welcome back, everybody. Hot mic on this Monday morning rolls on. We mentioned in our best of the weekend as we crown the six different state champions uh, over the weekend, Shanley Baseball, Davies Soccer won. Uh, we saw what happened. Uh, Kindred Richland won in Class B softball. Uh, Dickinson won in Class A softball. Class B baseball has been the domain of Thompson for the last two years, and they made it a three-peat on Saturday night with an absolute barn burner of a game at Jack Brown Stadium, knocking off their rivals from Grafton and all northeast uh, part of the state final on uh, Saturday night out in Jamestown. And Thompson, three-time state champion head coach, Nate Solis, joins us uh, this morning on a three-peat and a walk-off. I mean, when we talk about winning a championship, I don't, there's, right? That's it. That's the number one way to do it, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, certainly a memorable memorable moment for, for John getting the hit and uh, everybody involved, Braden, pitching a great game to get us uh, to the seventh with a chance to win and, and of course, getting the leadoff hit to start that. Uh, to spark that run, so um, you know certainly a very memorable, memorable way to win it, and um, that'll be remembered for a long, long time. In okay. Their so where were you on the hit, and did you make it on the dog pile? To, to give me your where you were the entire time. I was at third. I was uh, I was in Wolf Graham's ear, you know, making sure he tagged. I I wasn't <laughs> gonna mess around with anything there. Um, the the outfield was naturally playing a little bit uh, more shallow to make sure that they could make a throw, and and yep. John hit it over the right fielder's head, which was great. But my first instinct was to yell um, for Braden to tag. Uh, so I was I was pretty much uh, pretty close to the base, and uh, but he did a good job. He didn't really need me there to do that. But uh, once the ball got down, uh, he sprinted home. And- and, and got into the dog pile. I went to, to go hug the coaches. Uh, I didn't make it quite to the dog pile. Um, maybe if I had a, a few, uh, <laughs> few, a few more seconds um, to, to sprint over there, but I don't think I'd have got there in time. So uh, it's very memorable for sure. Can you talk about the catch? We were just watching the highlights on the top half of the inning, that catch in right field. Like what? Uh, that was a ridiculous play. Yeah, Jeremy did a great job. Um, you know, we we knew um, Villarreal was a, a great hitter. He really had, um, you know, his best stuff uh, at the plate that day. So we didn't we didn't feel real comfortable facing him. Um, you know, when there was an open base, I, I thought that was the opportunity to take it. Obviously, it was a risk facing uh, Kyler Drew, who's a, a great hitter for them. Um, so there was a little bit of a risk involved. And once I saw the ball uh, hit hit pretty hard, I'm like, uh oh. Uh, but Jeremy did a great job of, of running back and making a, a leaping catch. He's a, he's a great athlete um, and just used his instincts to, to make a big play for us and to give us another chance to get through, uh, through the seventh inning. To have a play like that, to win a state championship, I mean, everyone is memorable, but this one is going to be forever, right? I mean, this one you're going to remember for 50 years from now. Yeah, for sure. Uh, John, you know, that was he was pretty fired up, obviously. Um, not a lot of people get to be in that no. position. It's it's very select few. And for him to have that moment for himself and uh, to do that for his teammates and for the guys to get, you know, three straight hits to get on to yeah. load the bases. Um, you know, it started with Braden, who's who's our, been our senior leader all year. Uh, and uh, for Will to go in, hit a hard single, and Brody to get a bunt down, it was more of a sack. Um, but he's got some good speed and, and did a great job of getting it past the pitcher on that. Um, to set us up for for a bases loaded no out situation and, and for John to just have to put something in play and we told him line drive or a fly ball and and he certainly listened so I appreciate that and it was a uh, a special moment to give me the mindset in the dugout when they when Grafton had tied it how did the guys respond uh, I think just getting out because we were still in a little bit of a jam um, I can't remember exactly what the situation was I believe there was a runner on second or or third even. Um, and Braden had to go get another out. So I think just getting that out uh, was big for us to just hold, you know, not the lead, but to just be tied yeah. and, and get to another chance. We, we had a short meeting. I didn't say much. Um, it was a lot of, uh, you know, hey, brand new ball game, and, and let's go get some. The only thing I said is we got nine outs and they got six. So, um, you know, let's make ours count. And um, so it was, you know, I think they really leaned on the leadership that, and the experience that they've had going um you know in the past two years of winning those games and i think they certainly leaned on that when times got tough and and that's exactly what you want as a coach uh, for our leadership to step up and do that in a situation and they did for I, sure i had dustin Majo, central cast coach on thursday to get things started i asked him 
you know, you guys upset you didn't get the the one seat. Like, no, Thompson earned it. You did not lose to a North Dakota opponent this year. How proud are you of that? Super proud. And, um, yeah, we lost to a really good Sacred Heart team who <laughs> end up winning their section and, and going to state. Um, you know, we played a great game against them, and, and we had runners in scoring position, and we're one hit away, and it just didn't go our way. <laughs> but I guess if it has to do – if that has to happen, if, if that's got to happen in the regular season, I'm okay with it. Um, we did a really – and that was the last game of the year. Yeah. And we did a really good job of, of kind of just, you know, just forget about it, right? Like it doesn't uh, – doesn't hold really any meaning. Um, you know, the, the games that you have to win, are that we got to win six more games. And we knew that. And the guys did a really good job of responding from that point on and, and the practices that we had leading up to the region tournament. And then going through, you always have that week of, we have graduation right in the middle there. So, uh, you know, we, we have a few days off to kind of reset for three um, good practices before a state tournament. And uh, they did a really good job of, of getting better and just, you um, uh, pre- prepping for a state tournament run. You obviously were the favorites. You won it two years in a row. How, did, did this year feel different knowing everybody was coming, quote unquote, after you? Did you feel that? Did the guys feel that this spring? Um, maybe a little. We talk about it a lot. Uh, I know there's a lot of pressure uh, with with being a two time defending state champion. Um, I thought we did a great job of having it in the back of our mind, but really not pressing too much yeah. about it. Uh, you know there they didn't play with that pressure. They just knew they had to show up every game because, you know, everybody's going to want to beat you. That's, that's what the target on your back is being from Thompson. And then with the success that we've had. Um, so I was really impressed with, with how we played with that pressure. I don't really think it um, bothered us too much. Um, and like I said, there's, there's games where you might not have your best stuff, but you know, everybody's going to give you theirs. So you got to fight, fight through it. And we, there was a few games where we did have to do that mm. and we came out on top. And then there was a game that we obviously didn't. So you get you get the end of end of both of those, and um, you know what? It just prepares you for uh, a state tournament where every game is going to be tight. Every game, every team is going to be really solid. So when is the uh, talk about four Pete? Does that start now? Start today? Uh, we're, I'm still in the process of enjoying this one. <laughs> so are the guys. Uh, we'll talk about that, and we still got we start Legion yeah. on Thursday. So uh, we'll. Uh, We'll get onto the Legion schedule here, and and there is certainly time to talk. I'm sure it's been mentioned, and and obviously that's what you know you naturally kind of think about that in the in the back of your mind with, with how special that would be. But uh, you know we're gonna enjoy three for now. Uh, the guys will as well, and we'll get ready for Legion, and, and you know hopefully we can end with another Legion title for that. I had Steve Gust on the show, Crookston baseball coach. He's obviously hit your area really hard. The amount of players in your neck of the woods, Nate Thompson, Mayport, Grafton. Uh, Park River, I'm going to forget somebody that's going to get mad at me, but why is the baseball in your mind so good right now in that in that 50-mile radius? Well, I think it's just what you said. It's the, it's the programs and the, you know, I being it is my fourth year here and just the coaching that, you know, the, the people that coach and uh, put time into their programs, they're special people, and uh, they really know the game and connect with their players. There's a lot of really talented players. You look at, you said Crookston, you know, Every every year, there's two or three kids from this region, whether it's North Dakota or some in the Minnesota that we've played, and and they have success there. Yeah. That's really cool um, to you know not only have success at Crookston, but to have success with kids that you know have done it in this area, and you have that local support. Um, you know, I it's it's just really good baseball over here. I don't know exactly what it is. I think it's uh, credit to the kids for putting in the time and the effort to want to get better. Uh, you know, speaking for Thompson, I know that we got um, a great baseball town here and that, that tradition has been started since uh, Ryan Brannell started it. And um, you know, it's just, it's continued and in, in the legacy and the alumni that support, um, you know, looking at this in the crowd, uh, the, the amount of people that played for Thompson baseball that came back to support. I think that's really important. And then you watch and you see the young kids coming out to mm-hmm. celebrate whether they're siblings or whether they're, uh, uh, you know, a lot of our guys coach those kids in Little League. And um, it's super important to develop those relationships. And I think that's a, a big key to it. You know, you want to you you look up to some of those older kids. I know these kids looked up to the Schwabby boys and, yeah. and Marcus Hughes and, and that group. Um, and, and they wanted to continue that legacy. And I think they've done a good job of that. But I think that's where it really starts. Two minutes left here uh, with Nate. So Braden Wolfgram finishes his Thompson career perfect. He never lost a game on the mound. I mean, that that is ridiculous. Can you put into words what he meant to you? 
Oh, he's he's great for our program. He started as a, a freshman, um, a very, very tiny freshman that played second base. Um, you know, I remember early on in his career getting it hit out of the, in the infield, out of the infield. Um, you know, that was that was a, a you know a good hit for him, and he hit it hard. <laughs> uh, and then now you look here, and he's hitting doubles and triples yeah. and and home runs and all throughout the year, and then in the state tournament and region tournament. Um, obviously, uh, it's it's a credit to him and the amount of time that he has put in. Um, he is the definition of a gym rat and and loves the game of baseball. Um, nobody works harder than Braden Wolfgram, that's for sure. And he's earned everything that he's gotten. Seventeen and zero is a incredible um, record, and, and that's that's something that's going to stick around in our program for a while. You yeah. just don't have that. It's it's very rare. And for him to uh, go out, I was I was a little worried. You know, sixteen and zero, then it gets some recognition. Hopefully. <laughs> didn't want it to end at 16 and one. And I didn't, I wasn't, you know, too worried, but uh, you know, he, he did a great job of, of giving us a chance. There was nobody else that we'd rather have on that mound in the state ter- champ state championship than Braden. And, um, and the guys knew that. And I think they just feel really comfortable when he's on the mound. Cause you know, he's going to throw strikes, whether it's strikeouts or they're going to put the ball in play. we got to be able to make plays for him. Um, and so just an incredible, Incredible career yeah. for an incredible kid and some somebody that's meant a ton to our program. I'm going to ask our producer to throw up the video again or a still shot of you guys wear silver batting helmets. Can you tell me the origin of that? Because those are fantastic. Where did those come uh, about? Some, some of the guys, uh, I think it was uh, we had dark green ones. Um, and then some of the guys thought we wanted to do something a little bit different. We got black jerseys for our Legion season. We kind of mix and match in there. Um, so it looks pretty sharp. Yeah. Uh, I'll give them credit. I can't take credit. That wasn't my idea. Um, but they, they wanted to go with silver and I think it really, um, we got just the, the perfect, perfect helmet for that. And I think it really pops when you, and they match with both jerseys, which is great. And I think the, the kids like them, they feel good in them and, you know, hopefully they, they play well in them and that's what matters. Look good. Play good. Right, bud. Yeah, that's exactly it. Now you got to change them to gold with the fact you've won three titles in a row here. Uh, you know the lineage of Class B baseball. Uh, just describe to have this. I mean, three feet is something else. I mean, when one is really good, two is ridiculous. Three in a row. Now we're talking historic. When do you think it'll click about what you guys have done? Um, I I don't know. I I mean, you just kind of try to live in the moment. That's what I that's what I really tried to do on on Saturday after we won it. And um, you just you just thank the guys that put in the time to to earn the the achievement. Um, you know I. Just for my own curiosity, I, I did look. I believe there was only three or four teams at the Class B level that have done it. Um, so to be put into that is, um, you know, really, really cool, really special. Um, you know, there's there's obviously other people that will talk about it. And, um, you know, it, w- once you get to that point, um, I don't know if there's any one better than the other. It's <laughs> just you're in that group. And that's a, a tremendous honor to be a part of. That's for me to divide to, to discuss. Yeah, you know, we'll, let, right? we'll let you guys talk about that, and and, and we'll we'll worry about uh, practicing and getting better after that. I will say, I'd like to see your team play that Park River team that won three in a row. Now that would be fun. Yeah, well, we were on the other end of it. I, I, know. I wasn't here, but I I did watch those games, and um, I was on the field crew at Jack Brown for a, a couple of them. So, you know, I watched them, uh, the man they could hit. And, uh, you know, Brett Omdahl is a, a tremendous coach that I've gotten to know very well, and I have a tremendous amount of respect for. So, um, yeah, for us to be put into that category is a tremendous honor. Now, correct me if have you won the title in three separate cities, or did you win two in Jamestown and one in Minot? Uh, we won the first one was in Fargo. Okay, so, so you won Fargo, three and three Fargo, separate. Fargo, Minot, Jamestown. <laughs> Which one's their favorite one to play in? Get you in trouble. Uh, now get you in trouble. Which one? Uh, for me, it's Jamestown. Uh, being from there and and spending a lot of time yeah. at that field, uh, that's a personal um, bias that I have. So it was a a real special feeling to win that this year. Um, you know, but every every stadium, every field has its own uh, unique setup. Obviously, you have Newman with the Red Hawks, and um, you know the just the beautiful facilities that they have. Hit, it's cool for the kids to hit underneath the the grandstand and that. And then you go to Corbett who are our kids have never been to yeah. Corbett. They never really understood the history behind it, the uniqueness of, you know, where the dugouts are at and um, just the setup that they, and the tremendous upgrades that they've made. Um, so they, they got, a, they really loved, I, the feedback was that they really loved being at Corbett and the all turf 
Um, it was really cool. And then you got Jamestown. Um, you know, everybody's right on top of you. You, you feel yes. the noise, yes. you feel the intensity. That's, uh, that's kind of a, a different feel that maybe you don't get from the other two, I guess, um, that the kids certainly got. And, um, yeah, I, whether it, it helped us or not, but, um, you, you certainly feel the crowd and the, the reactions that they have. I really appreciate the time. I hope you get to enjoy a little bit of it before you got to get back to work. Thanks so much for doing this. Congratulations, and we'll talk again soon, okay? Thanks, Dom. Appreciate it. Nate Solis, head coach of the Thompson baseball team, three-peat after they walked off the Grafton Spoilers to win the Class B championship on Saturday night in Jamestown. That was fun. We'll take our final break. We'll come back much more on the J.J. deal, and we'll get you ready for a busy sports Monday. Hot Mike will wrap right after this.